So far in all of our videos, we've been focusing mostly on features that are fe that are in both Core and Pro, um, so that you can you know do either one. But today, I want to focus a little bit on the differences between Core and Pro, and how those can be used to really scale Darkroom up to be a very large scale system to high to uh, handle high volume. You know, even higher than you normally would with a single computer. So let's start with this diagram right here. Now this diagram kind of shows you some of the advantages. Now you can do a variety of things with Core and Pro combined using Pro as a server of the images and Core as a um, client station. So in this diagram, if you look in the top left corner, you'll see Darkroom Pro Server. Uh, it's just a little uh, representation of a computer that is running Darkroom Pro set up to be a server. Then over on the right-hand side, top right corner, you'll see what looks like two laptops and two cameras tethered to those laptops. So that would represent shooting stations. So you can use a core client to be a shooting station or a capture station to take photos. Then in the bottom right corner, you'll see Darkroom Core presentation stations. Those would be viewing stations where after the photos are captured, a uh, customer could go over and look at those viewing stations. Then on the extreme left bottom corner, you'd see what represents four printers. Those are DS40s. It could be any printer that's supported by Core and Pro. And those printers, uh, you can manage multiple printers with Darkroom uh, Pro and print to those those printers round robin style where let's say all the printers are capable of the same uh, image size you know say eight by tens five by sevens whatever then darkroom would alternate between them sharing the load to put out a high volume it could also share images over to the correct printer based on the image size. So if you only have, say, one printer that can do an 8x10, the rest of them are doing 4x6s or 5x7s, then Darkroom would send it to the correct printer based on the size. And that's all a Core and Pro feature. But in this particular application, when they're all connected together by that little, uh, what represents a, a, a network uh, uh, router in the center, uh, all network together, then they can do all of these things combined together to really increase the volume level. So, for example, in this particular illustration, I've got them shown wired. Uh, that's going to be the better way to do it. It provides much more uh, speed and also more reliability than a Wi-Fi network. You can use a Wi-Fi network, but because of the image sizes and things like that that are moving back and forth between all of these computers, a wired network is going to be much more reliable. Now with Pro running on a typical Windows 10 uh, computer, you can have up to 20 total concurrent connections to any one standard Windows computer. Now that's a Microsoft limitation. Beyond that, you'd need to go to a, a, a server OS like Microsoft Server or something like that. But just using regular Windows uh, 10 or 8, you can connect up to a total of 20 computers together in a network. So using that, you can connect any combination of one Pro, you only need one for each network system, and then any combination of core client stations that would be used in different ways. Now you can use those stations, each one like this illustration where you've got two capture stations taking photos and then it's got three presentation stations where people are looking at those photos. You could also use uh, Core for an editing station where after someone has looked at and placed their order then someone else would open it maybe do any retouching or anything else that might need to be done. Now what can you do with all that? Well there's a variety of things. First of all uh, it's used a lot in large studio systems so you imagine a large studio where they have two or three shooting rooms and then two or three presentation rooms so someone goes into a shooting room has their photograph taken like a senior portrait or a bridal portrait or something then in uh, when they're done there they go over to a presentation room where an employee a staff member sits down with them and shows them these images on screen for them to make their choice then after the order is placed then someone else in a a workroom somewhere could open those orders on an editing station 
and uh, you know make color corrections or blemish removal or something that might need to be done before sending it to a printer for printing. Now in this environment, the pro server manages the image exchange between all the clients and it manages the printing. So you'd use that for printing. All your printers would be connected to the pro computer. And then the other stations are just networked together. Now, in that situation, the more client stations you have, the more robust a computer you would need for your pro computer. Um, CPU and, and, and uh, network speed and internet, or not internet, CPU, network speed, and... Uh, Disk space are what's important on that pro server because all of the images taken are going to be stored on the pro server. So you want a pretty beefy, you know, large size um, hard drive to store all those things. Then you'd also need um, the uh, a CPU to manage multiple clients. The more clients you have, the the more computer you might need. Uh, an i5 or an i7 would be strongly recommended for the client stations and the shooting stations and things. They're not going to be doing a lot of heavy lifting. They're just capturing the image or viewing the image and then sending it back over to the, the pro computer. So, uh, you know, an i3 or pretty much any computer you can get running Windows currently today would be just fine. So you can do that. So this just gives you one illustration of what you can do with Core and Pro combined to really ramp up uh, your, your production. Now, again, in this particular illustration, you could add more presentation stations because you can shoot typically a whole lot faster than people can look at them and make up their mind to place an order. So you can ramp up, you know, and add more core capture stations and so on. Now, each one of the capture stations will need a separate individual copy of core. So you need one copy of pro and then one copy of core for each additional client station. Uh, if you buy those all at one time, we have some discounts that can be applied and so on. Uh, but you do need one copy of core for each additional uh, capture station or client station. <clears throat> All right, now I'm going to switch over to the Pro so you can see what that looks like during setup and everything. So this is Pro. Uh, it looks very much like core. The way you can tell the difference real quickly is to look in the top left corner where you see right here where it says professional. Um, then I'm pretty much all the other controls are the same. The user interface works the same and everything but let's step over to the setup tab and in the setup tab under networking this is how you would turn this on now the networking portion is going to vary a little bit depending on what version of Windows you're using whether it's 7 8 or 10 um, that can vary a little bit it is a Windows networking thing and not necessarily features in darkroom but it is Windows networking. So you may have to, if you don't, uh, if you're not familiar with Windows networking, you might want to find someone who is to help you with that. But once you set up the network so that all the computers are seeing each other and talking to each other, in this network options setting on the Pro, you want to check this right here, server computer. All right. So there's three options. There's single computer. That would just be a normal single standalone mode. You can also use Pro as a capture station if you have one. There's no advantage to Pro as a, uh, a client station over Core other than if you have multiple Pros, you could use it if you wanted to. Um, but you could use that. Then Pro has this option for a server computer that Core does not have. So if you click right here, you'll see that I have one client station connected. And that's all. If I had more, you'd see the name of all those different workstations down through there. Now, at the very bottom of this, you'll see Path to Store Photos and Data. Now, this is very important. This folder is where everything is stored in Darkroom. This is true for Core and Pro. If you change that without relocating that information, all those catalogs, all those images and everything, then the next time you start Darkroom, it's not going to be able to find your catalogs. And then you're going to freak out and call us going, help, what happened? It's because you told Darkroom to look for them somewhere else. So don't change this unless you know what you're doing. If you need help with that, contact our support staff. But this, photo, this folder right here that's listed there has to be shared on the network with read and write privileges so all the client stations on the network 
can see and save and open images within that station or within that folder. Now Darkroom Pro is going to manage all of the images and everything. You're going to access them through Core, but at the same time it just needs to be shared so that the the uh, networking part is not restricting that. Over time with uh, various uh, updates and things, uh, the various Windows versions from XP on up have gotten more and more restrictive and more and more security conscious with networks. So if you need some help with sharing that you can give us a call there's some knowledge base articles specific to sharing that photos folder uh, you can also call our support staff for help with that so that folder right there photos needs to have read and write privileges on the network once you do that then you would uh, I'll show you what you're going to do in core but once you do that in core and you set those to client stations they should appear right in here okay so now I'm going to switch over to Core so you can see how that works. Give me one second here. Okay, this is Core. Now, you, it looks just exactly the same as I mentioned, except up in the top left corner you'll see Core Edition. So right up there. So now you know you're on Core. So if we go to the same Setup tab in Core, then you'll see here that it's set for Client Computer. And um, in most cases, you need to manually specify this. This is the IP address on my network. It will vary depending on your network. But this is the IP address of the server computer. So Darkroom knows where that photos folder is. If I click test, then it's going to come back after a second and tell me that you know it's able to connect and everything. So we, we've got a good connection. And so there you have all of that set up there. Now once you do that, then when you go here, you're able to see images that are on the, uh, the server computer. So all of the catalogs and everything here are all on the same, uh, are all the ones that are on the server computer, the pro computer. So that gives the client stations all access to all of the same images and everything at the same time. So you can have individual people working on different ones. In this particular illustration, you could have several people uh, maybe doing different things with each one of these different catalogs all at the same time, unlike you would if you had a, all just on a single computer. This way you can have multiple people and you could really ramp up the volume as it goes through. So now if you were to place an order, I want to show you this right here. So let's say I placed an order for uh well, let me i didn't even select one so let's say i select that one right there and i place an order one eight by ten all right so then once i get that all ready to go and i've, I've got it all set up if i click place order then i'm going to go back to the um the pro i'm going to switch right back over there so here's the pro and this is the orders tab on pro if you look down at the bottom this is the orders tab now, if you have many client stations, like 6, 8, 10 client stations capturing images and everything all at once, you wouldn't want to use Pro to do all that. You just want to use Pro for management and image um, and order management. So in this orders tab right here, you'll see right here I've got an order that says waiting to be printed. So from here, if I double click on that order waiting to be printed, you'll see there's the image that I placed an order for. Now, at this point in time, you can color correct you can do whatever you want to do if you need to you could uh, you know crop it make some adjustments to that before sending it to a printer then if I click save order it's ready to be printed now right here just under the darkroom logo you'll see a button that says auto print if I were to click check uh, check that box then it's going to automatically send that job to the printer as soon as it comes in in most situations like this uh, you want to wait make wait to send it to the printer till you get paid uh, you'd like to make sure that the people actually pay you and so in most cases you wait for an order to stay here in the uh, the orders tab until they pay for it and then you reach down here and click you know print order and then it'll send it to the printer um, but uh, you can also edit it right there so you can see I'm gonna go back over to my core and I'm gonna place another order and as soon as I do you'll see it pop up there in uh, in the uh, the pro just like that so every time I place an order it shows up over there so then you can choose an order if you double click on it again it opens in an editor where you can 
edit it if you need to, color correct it, do whatever you need to do there, and then just save it, and then it's ready to be printed. So you can see how if you had a lot of volume going on, you could just have some person sitting here and watching the orders and managing those and sending those to the printers. All right. Now then, I'm going to switch over here to um, another view where you can see both of these at the same time. So if you watch in the right-hand bottom corner, I've got the core station. And then in the um, left-hand top corner, I've got the pro station. So when I select, now you see when I place an order on this one, as soon as I click place order, you'll see it show up in the top left corner over there for my pro. All right. So I'll place another order. And it shows up over there waiting to be printed. Now, Capture works the same way. You would just select whatever catalog over here you want it to go into. You have a camera tethered. As soon as the image comes in, it's uh, shared over to the and saved on the uh, pro computer. And that gives you the opportunity to um, manage it over there if as you need it. Okay. Now then, um, back to our diagram for just a second. On the, uh, the left where I have the printers listed there, the other thing that Pro adds is the ability to support really high volume mini lab printers. So these would be big printers by Noritsu, Fujifilm, printers that cost, you know, forty, fifty thousand dollars $50,000 and up. Very, very high volume printers that are capable of hundreds and even thousands of 8 by 10s an hour. So Pro can support those as well. Uh, Core doesn't do that alone. So Pro does that so you can print very high volume. Um, but you can also print to multiple printers to increase your volume if you're just using something like a die sub printer or a DX100 uh, inkjet printer. And Darkroom will manage that over to um, the, uh, the printing systems to send it to the correct printer. This is used many times uh, also on Santa Claus operations. So if you have one or two capture stations where you have a Santa Claus and you're taking those pictures, then people go over to the presentation station and view from there uh, so they can manage, uh, look at their images and place their order. That gives you plenty of bandwidth to show these images to multiple people at a time because you can have multiple client stations. Now I want to show you one other thing. Uh, there is one other mode. Let me switch over to my core. This is more of a self-serve mode. It's This is called the uh, presentation station mode. So it's a much more simplified uh, interface where people can select an image and then they see it here. Now all along here you see adjustment uh, abilities where, you know, they can crop and zoom and scale the image, move it in and out, even make uh, color corrections to make it brighter or lighter or darker, whatever. All of those things can be turned off if you don't want people to have that ability. In many cases, if you're just dealing with parents or something that are looking at images, you don't want them to be able to make those changes. So you can just uncheck a box in the, the uh, controls tab or uh, setup tab and, and turn all those things off. Then over on the right top corner, you'll see the packages. All of these things you set up yourself so that people can choose whatever package. So when they choose a package and then they choose check out, they would fill in all this information here. So, uh, you know, let's, let's just say, um, let me fill in a little bit of information here. And I'm not going to fill it all in, but you get the idea. Um, so they fill in all this information here with all of their contact information. All of this information is stored with the order. Then when they place order, they would see a receipt here. Now there's two different types of receipts. This is a simple receipt intended for like a thermal printer or something where it's just text. There's also a more complicated receipt that you could use for a laser printer or a chip printer that prints a full size sheet of paper with thumbnails of each image ordered and so on. And that uh, gives a lot more order information. But if you notice right here in the top corner, it's got an order number. This one ends in 408. So if you have a receipt printer or some other kind of printer attached to the viewing stations, the client stations, when they place this order, it's going to print out a receipt for them. 
once they get that receipt printed out, I'm going to switch back over here to the pro. Once they get that receipt printed out, you'll see right here, I got that same order number, 408, and it's got the name there. So someone could come up to the station with their receipt and say, hi, my name is Joe Smith. I placed an order a few minutes ago and I need to pay you for it. Now, Darkroom can also tabulate on that receipt what amount of money they owe based on the prices you set for your packages. So if you have an 8 by 10 for $10 or whatever, you set all that up, it's going to tabulate that on the receipt. They owe you $49.95, including sales tax or whatever. Then um, they pay you for it. And then once they do, then you would come down here to print order. Then it would let it go to the printer and they get their photos. Um, you would uh, have to use some other form of payment acceptor if you're using credit cards like Square or something. Darkroom doesn't have a uh, direct uh, point of sale you know, to credit cards or anything, but it does tabulate um, all of that information that can be re uh, exported later. But uh, it would let them know how much they owe you. And so you can just go through here and find you know, Joe Smith and so on. You can also search for that information. So if you press F5, uh, let's see if, yeah, well, you can click find and you can put in the order ID and search for that so that you can just find it real quickly if this page is just filled with orders. So you would just put in this order number right here. Okay. So you can see Darkroom Core Pro combined could really ramp up a high volume system system for photographing, you know, little leagues, um, school photos, uh, Santa Claus, any sort of situation where you've got a lot of people to photograph in a very short period of time and be able to deliver those photos quickly. I hope that made sense. And if you have any other questions or anything, you can certainly contact our support staff uh, for information. We're available Monday through Friday, 8 to 5 Central Time. Have a great day.